Okay, so are you in the mood for an awesomely delicious lemon cider? Stick around. Okay, welcome back to Beaver DIY. The channel all about doing things yourself. So, we are now progressing on to our next drink or beer or cider, whatever you want to call it. We are now going to be making a lemon cider or lemon beer if you want to call it that. What we need to do is uh, we need to ferment a fruit and our fruit today will be a lemon. So every one of these videos will build on to the other one. So we'll incorporate a few new techniques, a few new uh, stuff that you're going to use to build on the last couple of videos. So. Um, as we go through, I'll explain all the things that we're going to be needing, but a quick overview of the ingredients. You need your yeast. My yeast has been pre-activated over here in some sugar water, some lemon juice. I've got lemons over here. I've got my cream of tartar and my Epsom salts, my tea bags once again, some gelatine, some sugar, and that's about it. For equipment wise, we're going to need a fine grater, we're going to need a thermometer, necessary but not, you can do without it, but it does help, a whisk of some kind, and once again a way in which you're going to blend up your fruit. And then, very important, is your sanitized and cleaned fermentation vessel, whether it is your uh, cooler box, a bucket with a hole drilled in the top of it, whatever you're going to use, as long as it can seal airtight and no buggies can come in and you can fit an airlock to it, you are golden. So I will be using my carboys again, my plastic carboys. I'll be using my trusty bubbler. If you want to see the video for the bubbler, click the card up top there. I'll link it up top there for you to see how to make these bubblers for yourself. Okay, so first step when we're going to be making our cider is we need to prepare our water. So I took 20 liters of water, I divided it up. The half the water is boiling on the stove, the other half is, or two thirds actually, is in the fridge busy chilling. Um, so I can add the two together and get my temperature of my uh, mash or my water, whatever you want to call it, my batch down quickly so I can pitch my yeast, get my airlock on and make sure that we have uh, a nice sterile clean environment for the yeast to do its job in. So first up, we need to dissolve our sugar and our tea bags need to steep in our boiling water. So let's get to it. Okay, so while our sugar is dissolving and we're bringing that water back up to a boil to boil off any microbes, um, we will now be macerating or destroying the, the cell walls of our lemons to ensure we get as much juice out of it as possible. I will also be grating the outside of my lemon to get some lemon zest. So I'm going to use the, the zest of two lemons in my batch. Let's get to that part. Okay guys, so while I'm peeling these lemons, just a couple of quick um, formulas or equations or whatever you want to call it that I use when I develop my, uh, my recipes and so on, is you need to be able to calculate the amount of alcohol that you're going to be producing with any given batch that you're going to be making. So one of the important things to know is how much fermentable sugars will be in the mixture when it is uh, completely mixed up. That now includes your fruit, your tea bags, everything else that you're going to be adding. How much sugar will that put into the water? So how much sugar the yeast will have to eat? Now, you can do it the fancy way, you can use your hydrometer that will measure the specific gravity of your liquid. That will also give you a reading. 
which will be your opening gravity or, or your OG. And then your OG is taken and subtracted from your SG or your finishing gravity, your FG, your finishing gravity at the end of the fermentation. Those two are all, um, subtracted from each other and that will give you the percentage of alcohol inside of your um, in, inside of your your potential or your not your potential but inside of your cider or your beer or whatever so if you have a hydrometer great if you don't there is a way that you can calculate it it's not going to be 100% accurate but it will give you a rough idea so for every 125 grams of sugar that you add to one liter of liquid or water, you will generate roughly 40 gravity points. So that differs between different sugars. Uh, brown sugar will obviously give you a bit more fermentable sugars than your white sugar, but 40 points is a good average to work towards. So what does that mean? If you now take that one liter of liquid and you ferment it out, meaning you add yeast and you allow it to come to a complete stop when fermenting, so there's no more bubbles or no more activity, and all the sugars have been used up, you will end up with around about 6% alcohol in your um, brew whether it's a cider or a beer or whatever, it doesn't really matter, but you'll end up with about 6% alcohol. So for this specific recipe, we are going for about 3000 grams of sugar, fermentable sugars, in your 20 liters of liquid. So what that means is with 20 liters of liquid and 3000 grams of sugar, we are going to be averaging out at about 6% to 7% alcohol in the brew. So for that meaning, brewer's yeast will work fine. If you just wanna use brewer's yeast, you'll be good to go. Um, if you wanna use baker's yeast, you'll also be good to go. Okay, so while I'm zesting the lemon, remember that all that all the fruit that I use gets washed in my uh, sanitizer. So I wash all the fruits in the sanitizer to prevent any natural yeast that is naturally occurring on any fruit to uh, stick onto the brew and end up in the final batch. So everything does get sanitized. So. You can either boil your fruit if you want to, or you can just rinse it in your sanitizer and make sure that all the baddies are off and you know exactly what you're adding to your brew. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just straining out all the pulp and all the other stuff. Um, the reason for this is that's where the gelatin comes in. So stick around to the end of the video to see what we're going to do with the gelatin or gelatin or whatever. Um, and that's going to help us to get a crystal clear cider or beer. Okay, so now what I've done is I've removed all the pulp, got all the juices and all that lovely stuff in here, and I'm mixing it through with my um, my zest. So the zest is going to be there to give that nice bitter lemon flavor. So yeah, um, 
take your time with this process, but be quick. The longer it's out, the more chance you have of attracting little buggies. So let's move on to the next step where we now are going to start transferring everything into our fermentation jars and check our temperature and pitch our yeast. Let's get to it. Okay, so now first, like we did with the previous uh, recipe, like the previous recipe, we are going to transfer the hot liquid and the cold liquid into our vessel. Remember now that your vessel at the end of the day might be glass, it might be plastic, it might be a, a, a bucket, a cooler box or whatever. But don't add the hot liquids or the cold liquids into the hot liquids too quickly. It will just create problems for you. Your glass might break, your plastic might deform or whatever. So add a little bit of cold, add a little bit of hot, hot, cold, hot, cold to keep that temperature nice and constant throughout. First things first, we need to add our juices and then I'm gonna pour in some of my hot liquid into the juice to kill off any further bacteria or any further natural yeast that might have made its way onto this. So by adding that hot liquid in, twirling it around a bit, we are now killing off any of that last little bit of yeast that we have there or any other bacteria. And then also remember while you're adding your liquids in add as much oxygen in as possible before you pitch your yeast you want as much oxygen in your brew as possible it's only once you add your airlock to the top that you don't want any more oxygen coming in your yeast needs nutrients and oxygen and sugar that's what it needs to do its job okay cool Okay, so next up our water conditioning and nutrient. So I will be adding a little bit of Epsom salts and a little bit of cream of tartar to this batch over here. They will do two things. Number one, the cream of tartar is a stabilizer. So it keeps your fruit from going bad um, really quickly. So it gives you a nice crisp flavor and then the Epsom salts will add a nice bitter bite to your brew. So the exact volumes and amounts are down in the description. So let's get into it. Next up, our hot liquid. So this is our sugar water that we have pre-dissolved, making sure that all the sugar is nice and dissolved inside of this. So just be careful, it's hot. Okay, just to prevent uh, any of my funnels or anything from collapsing or breaking, whatever, I just added a bit of my clean. So that water was pre-boiled and then put into the fridge to cool down. So uh, just added that to my liquid over here, just to bring the temperature down a little bit so I can transfer it in there a bit quicker. As I said before guys, try and incorporate as much oxygen into this as possible. So pour everything in from a nice high height. This is why I'm not using my siphon that I normally use uh, when I'm doing uh, transfers and that type of stuff. It's, I want to increase the amount of oxygen contact. So this means pouring the stuff from a height, um, allowing it to fall down into the bottle to create a nice oxygen rich environment for the yeast to do its thing. Okay, so while I'm adding the tea water now, I let the tea sit for a long time. Uh, when I say a long time, I mean about 30 minutes to an hour, allowing it to steep in and release as much of the juices as possible so all the flavors and stuff needs to go into our batch um, been having a lot of questions on facebook and so on regarding why we need to add the tea and what the tea is for so the tea is to add bitterness and depth of flavor 
because if you only take your lemons or your apples or your oranges or whatever you're going to be adding and you only add that into the mixture without having anything else that will have uh, that will add flavor like the tea what will happen is you'll just get a very strong alcohol taste and very little flavor so the tea actually adds nice depth of flavor like the hops and the grain will do in a normal brew when you do a normal beer tip invest in a good quality funnel unfortunately my daughter thinks funnels are playthings so every time I buy a new funnel it kind of disappears so uh, every time I want to make beer or anything I'm forced to run around the house looking for a funnel and I end up making a homemade quick DIY funnel so yeah invest in a good quality funnel and uh, Make sure your kids don't get to it because it's a lot of fun for them to play with a funnel. I don't know why, but it is fun. Okay, when transferring your tea water, do not get your tea bags into your vessel. You're going to struggle to get it out unless you're using a bucket or something that has a big opening on top. Um, do not let your tea bags go into your fermentation. That's just going to end up on the bottom of your. Uh, jar when you do your transfers and you're just going to lose a lot of liquid so try as much as possible not to get your tea bags into your jar it won't make in it won't harm anything if they are in there when you start fermenting or whatever but i prefer not to have them in it just gives me a cleaner brew at the end Okay, so now we're just going to top it up with some additional water to our level that we want it at. So I'm going to leave a little bit of room once again at the top to allow when fermentation starts happening that nothing boils over out the top there. So don't fill your vessel up all the way to the brim. Leave a little bit of headroom for the stuff to move up and down. So I'm going to aim for right about the top there. That will give me plenty of uh, room for activity. So after filling it up, I'm going to give it one last good shake up, measure the temperature, make sure it's ready for the yeast to be pitched. Once the yeast is pitched, I'm going to put my uh, airlock and everything on top of it. I'm going to wrap it in my blanket, put it in a cool place, a dark cool place and let it ferment over the next couple of days, checking on it every day to see how my fermentation is going. Try and keep it at about 20 to 23 degrees. Anything lower than that and your yeast activity will slow down and will take longer to ferment. Any quicker than that and your yeast might add some funky flavors and stuff to your brew. So 20 to 23 degrees, you're perfectly fine. Let's give it a shake. Okay, so after shaking it up and getting it ready to pitch my yeast, just before I pitch my yeast, I'm just going to quickly test my temperature once again and ensure that I am within the range that I need to pitch my yeast at. Okay, so we add roughly about 25 degrees. That is perfectly fine to start pitching our yeast. Um, and then before I do that, I just want to give everything a quick taste to taste if there's enough sugar and enough tea flavor and all that other stuff before I pitch my yeast and I can't do any other changes to it. So, just going to give it a quick taste.
It tastes like a nice lemon flavor iced tea at the moment. There's a lot of sugar in it, nice and sweet. So that means there's a lot of fermentable sugars in here and we will get a nice alcoholic kick from it. It is not too sour, so the yeast will still be able to eat and fry and do everything it needs to do inside of here. But yeah, it's got some good flavor. So now we can pitch our yeast, get our air, air caps on, our air locks on, and then start uh, the whole process. Okay, so guys, as always, keep everything nice and clean. You don't want any stickiness on there, because if you like me, you will spill a lot. Um, keep everything nice and clean. Once you have everything nice and clean, you can pitch your yeast. So we're now going to take our yeast. We're going to add our yeast into the fermenter. Once again, give it a quick shake up. Put our airlocks on, put our blanket around it and get it underneath the stairs where I put mine, which is a nice dark place. So, as I said, here's my yeast. Formed a nice little foamy head. I'm just going to give it one quick little shake up, stir up, whatever you want to call it. Get all everything down from the bottom up into the solution again. And I'm going to add it into the jar. For those that have been sticking around up until the end now and want to know about the gelatin, the gelatin is used to clarify your beer. Shout out to Marco. He used it in the Hunter's recipe. He sent me some pictures. They came out crystal clear. So um, you can add it to your any beer, any recipe that you want to add it to that. That will clarify your beer quite nicely. So yeah, after about three days, mix it up in a cup of lukewarm hot water then add it into your brew get your lids and everything back on leave it to stand for another two maximum three days everything will settle out down to the bottom okay guys so um, guys and girls as always thank you for watching if you like these kind of videos please feel free to give it a like down below hit the subscribe button and if you want to get in contact with me my email address will be here somewhere and remember to subscribe. Have a good day.